A COVID-19 vaccine maker, Pfizer, could raise the price of its shots by up to four times current levels as demand in the United States weakens. Analysts say the drug company and other vaccine makers would have to hike prices to meet Wall Street revenue forecasts for next year. The U.S. government currently pays around $30 per dose to Pfizer and BioNTech. All Americans can get inoculated for free. But after the purchase program expires next year, prices may shoot up to as high as $130. But weak demand for COVID-19 vaccines in the U.S. means consumers will likely pay a lot more once buying shots move to the private sector. A recent poll shows two-thirds of American adults do not plan to get inoculated soon. Experts say infections among those who have received their dosage has left many questioning the efficacy of vaccines. In fact, demand for vaccines is waning around the world. It's the primary reason why the Serum Institute of India dumped 100 million doses of its COVID shield jab in December last year. While the majority of India's population are inoculated, the need for booster jabs has plummeted. That of the companies as people are fed up with COVID-19 and that there's no demand for booster vaccines. More on this, Professor Mark Jitt joins us live. He's head of the Department of Infectious Disease Epidemiology at London School of Hygiene and Tropical Medicine. Professor Jitt, uh, let me quote uh, this uh, from uh, an executive from Pfizer. Now, she says, we are confident the U.S. price point of the vaccine uh, ensures the price will not be a barrier for access for patients. From $30 to $130, even for a wealthy country, a relatively wealthy country like the United States, that is some barrier, would you say? I think, well, for a rich country like the USA, it might be possible that the government would be able to pay this price or um, private insurers might be able to pay this price if there is another COVID wave. For most of the rest of the world, we'll have to see what the prices are. I mean, even with current prices, a lot of countries are not able to afford the COVID vaccines. But the reason why these prices need to go up, we are told, is because... Uh, Given weakening demand, people have vaccine fatigue or they just do not think these vaccines are efficient enough. Uh, weakening demand means for these companies to make the kind of money they want to make next year and beyond, they need to push up prices. So, in fact, we're looking for bad news on the health front, for better news on the vaccine price front. Yes, unfortunately, it's difficult to know what the news will be like in the future. Currently, most people have already been vaccinated or have been infected by the strain that's now circulating, the Omicron strain. So the need for vaccination is not as great. But if there's a new strain of COVID, whether a new Omicron strain or a completely different strain, especially if it turns out to be more severe than the current strain, I think there will be a great need for vaccination. Otherwise, we'll find ourselves back in the situation we were about a year or two ago. So we really have to wait and see, but the demand for vaccine and the need for vaccine might rapidly become more urgent if we see a new strain in the coming year. A wait and see might not be good enough by the time, as we have seen in the last two years, by the time we get a big wave of infections from a strain that uh, we have very little immunity for, vaccines will come too late, there'll be a huge <laughs> supply shortage and people will die and we cannot wait and see on this. Is there any way to preempt this wait and see? Yes, I think you, you're really right about that. I mean, the companies have shown that if there is a new strain, they are able to bring out a vaccine which is adapted to this strain within a few months. But even that few months will be a very difficult time. I mean, the good thing is we are not completely back to 2020. We have other tools as well. We have better tests now. We have antivirals. But I think we might be in a situation where, as societies, we need to be vigilant. And if these strains come out, I'm afraid the COVID story is not over yet. We might have to, you know, start thinking about, you know, being very careful about wearing masks, where we're going if we run into a dangerous situation like this. I hope it won't happen, but we just have to be vigilant. All right. Uh, bad news, uh, meaning better news for prices. Now, that's uh, the health front. On the other front, if vaccines can be shown to, for example, prevent mild instances of getting COVID-19, maybe have a pan-COVID kind of vaccine or one that is able to work in combination with the flu vaccine that we have already right now, that will be a way to sell this, increase demand and therefore bring down prices. Would that be one way to go? 
that would be excellent news when we can develop this pan-COVID vaccine. I do want to stress that even though current vaccines might not work against the latest strain in preventing mild disease, these booster doses do prevent um, the most severe diseases. That's why governments are prioritizing the sort of second booster, the fourth dose for the most um, vulnerable patients because it might stop them from going to hospital or sadly even dying from COVID. So they still have value, but they're not as good as a vaccine that could um, prevent the latest strain and the strain after that. So really, that is what we are looking and hoping for, that pan-COVID vaccine. Oh, thanks so much for joining us, Professor Mark Jit from the London School of Hygiene and Tropical Medicine.